Happy Halloween, y'all. Yeah. If you celebrate that sort of thing. If you don't, this is just a day like any other. Um, but that's not what I'm here for. Um, want to talk to y'all a little bit about werewolves. Everybody know my favorite supernatural creature is werewolf. Um, I dig werewolves and I made a really cool video about some of my favorite werewolves and I would like to reshare it with y'all today in another d -Real remix. So here it is, my top five werewolves in the movies and check it out. What up y'all? It is Halloween weekend. And because it's Halloween weekend, I'm going to be giving some love and respect to lycanthropes, werewolves. They don't get enough love. So I am going to do a top five werewolves movie. Let's be real with Derek. Hello and welcome, realists, to another session of Be Real with D Real, where entertainment is what I do. I'm that cat D Real. What's popping? It's the weekend. It's Halloween weekend. Y'all going trick or treating? Y'all going pub crawling? Y'all going what? Are, what you gonna do for Halloween, man? Throw me something in the comments, man. Let me know. And also, while you off in the comments, comment, like, and subscribe to this page right here so I can know what you like, what you don't like, and what I need to do more of and a lot less of. Entertainment is what I do, so I want to do it effectively. Comment, like, subscribe. If you're digging what I'm shoveling, put some dirt in my bucket. Now, without further ado, we always talk about vampires and zombies and all that type stuff, but we don't be giving no love to werewolves. And werewolves are, in my opinion, a much doper supernatural creature than a vampire. They're, they're, they're definitely more physically powerful because uh, they do more without weapons than, than, than vampires do with. So I don't know what all the who, because they're romantic and everybody wants to kiss a vampire, make out with a vampire, got all that Twilight true love mess. But here's what we're doing. We're going to rock with some serious vampire, uh, not vampire, with some serious werewolf movies. I have picked five of my favorite werewolf-based type movies, and I'm going to run them down to you. So let's go ahead and get started with number five. Number five is Wolf. Wolf was released June 17, 1994 and featured Jack Nicholson, Michelle Pfeiffer, and James Spader with Mike Nichols directing. Wolf is the story about a down and out uh, 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 guy who works at a publishing company uh, who gets his job taken by a younger cat played by James Spader, but then he gets bit by a wolf and he starts to become more vibrant, more strong, more virile, and also becomes more wolf-like. Starts going out at night, hunting animals. Now, what I liked about Wolf was it was a werewolf movie without really saying that's a werewolf, okay? They referred to what Jack Nicholson was, was turning into as a demon wolf and that only certain people have that analog in them to become wolf-like because at the end of the movie Michelle Pfeiffer starts turning wolf-like even though nobody bit her or at least nobody bit her visibly on the screen uh, overall it was a good movie it was it was well met be quiet phone it was well met uh, as far as reviews and did somewhat well in the box office. You know, they got love for some werewolf movies while not having love for others. Overall, I dug Wolf. I thought it was a pretty good movie. Not just a good movie about werewolves. I thought it was a, a pretty good movie overall. Um, moving on to number four, we get, we, we, we get a throwback. And the next two movies came out in the same year, 1981. The first one, number four, is The Howling. Yeah. 
The Howling, like I said, it came out in April of 81, starred D. Wallace, Patrick McNee, John Carradine, and Kevin McCarthy, and was directed by Joe Dante. Now, this movie clearly was about werewolves, and it was one of the first movies where you got to see those groundbreaking werewolf transformations. So rather than it just being a wolf man, I think that was one of the first movies I ever saw where you know, a human being transformed and their face got, you know, snouty, you know, like a, a like a like the snout of a canine. Um, and and those special effects were just groundbreaking for the time to watch, you know, people turning into actual werewolves. And I think that was the like freaky, trippy part about it. Um, it follows the story of D. Wallace, who's a newspaper reporter who's being stalked by this weird guy who actually turns out to be a freaking werewolf um she has a nervous breakdown and she's got to go out into the country to recover and she ends up going to a werewolf coven her husband gets turned and starts freaking werewolves and all of this kind of stuff and eventually she gets bitten becomes a werewolf and turns into a werewolf on live television i thought that was wild it was a pretty cool movie overall um, as far as horror movies go, it didn't scare me, but it was really werewolfy, and so I enjoyed it. Which brings us to number three on my list, An American Werewolf in London, which came out in August of 1981, same year. Interesting piece of information, Rick Breaker, who is a great makeup artist, worked on The Howling, but left The Howling to go work on American Werewolf in London. Now, David Naughton, Griffin Dunn, Jenny Agater, and John Wood Woodvine star in American Werewolf in London and is directed by the great John Landis. What John Landis injects into a werewolf movie that we've never seen before was humor. There were jokes, there were inside jokes, there were dark jokes, but you know, you thought to yourself, this isn't the regular fare that you get in a werewolf, not to mention transformation special effects that were on a par with, with the howling, if in my opinion, if not better. I like the transformation of, of, of uh, David Naughton's character turning into a werewolf more than I did the howling. And he's more cursed in a sense, rather than the werewolves on the howling who embrace their werewolfness and don't care. He's cursed when he kills someone, their ghost haunts him. And so he's got all of these ghosts walking around, getting on his nerves in the day, seeing all kinds of stuff, looking all mangled and tore up. So that, and that was kind of funny in and of itself, but it wasn't. Um, American Werewolf in London did okay at the box office. This was 1981. This was before marketing. And it was just kind of like a horror movie. So it was like horror comedy. And it works because from word of mouth, everybody was like, did you check that out? Did you see that movie? It was a trip. It was funny. It was scary. American Werewolf in London. That's number three on my list. Number two, which is probably going to be a shocker to some, is the 2010 version of The Wolfman. Now, I know what you're saying. The 2010 version of Wolfman was not as commercially successful as it should have been. However, it did become a cult classic afterwards, simply because of a couple of things. One, the transformation effects, the, 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 the werewolf transformation effects were great. Guess who worked on that movie? Rick Baker. And along with David Elsie, they won Best Makeup at the 1983 Academy Awards. So before we say the wolf man's a failure, bam, check that out. Also, that was the first time you ever seen a wolf man, well, got a good look at a wolf man breaking down and running on all fours like a wolf leaping, jumping, bounding, eviscerating folks, ripping out guts, tearing out throats. And then the trip part about it was this wolf man was the son of another wolf man who killed his wife and killed his, his son, who was Benicio del Toro's brother, and sent his son to a sanitarium because he didn't want anybody to find out that he was a werewolf. But later on, the two wolfmen end up squaring off 
and and it was uh, it was something it was something to see uh like i said it was benicio del toro anthony hopkins emily blunt and hugo weaving hugo weaving plays the the guy who's hunting down the werewolf and then we get an interesting twist on that one but overall I like the wolf, man. I thought the story was cool. I thought the effects were cool because, you know, you see a guy standing somewhere and then the werewolf just bowls him over like a football tackle and you don't see that cat no more. Dope movie. Say what you want to say about it. May not have been a commercial success, but it's a cult classic. And in some ways, being a cult classic is better. Now, before we get to my number one movie, I just want to give a shout out to uh, the 1941 wolf man with Lon Chaney Jr. because that was the first werewolf movie ever. And without Lon Chaney and that wolf man, we wouldn't have all of these other wonderful lycanthropes to talk about. So shouts out to the 1941 wolf man movie, Universal Pictures, Lon Chaney Jr., the pioneer. Now my number one, Werewolf movie is you probably already guessed because you're looking at all of these and you're like, what werewolf movie is there that's worth mentioning that's any good? Well, of course, number one movie has to be Underworld Rise of the Lightnings. Came out January 2009. Patrick Totopoulos directed and it featured Michael Sheen, Ron Amitra, Kevin Gravoy, and Bill Knight. The, as you know, if you know about the werewolf, I mean, the Underworld series, werewolves and vampires are at war with each other. But Rise of the Lycans is a prequel story that tells us how the werewolves and the vampires came to be at odds with each other. Come to find out, Lucian, played by Michael Sheen, is carrying on an affair with Sonia, played by Rona Mitra, who is the daughter of Victor, who is the king of the vampires. And, you know, the werewolves were the vampire slaves and all of that, and, and werewolves and, and vampires mixing. That was a no-no. Then when they found out about it, I will say one thing. Victor was gangster and went on ahead and roasted his own daughter. He said, if don't nobody follow the rules, ain't going to be no order. So, girl, you got to sit in the sun. Mm, 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 mm. And the werewolf transfer, Kevin Gravoy. Let's just say something about that. That voice, man, he sound like he eat rocks for breakfast. My man got the gravelliest, deepest, bassiest voice in the history of voices, man. But overall, the special effects, the fight, man, just look. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is why Rise of the Lycans is my numero uno. Did you enjoy it? Do you have choices that you will put in different places? Do you have different movies that you will put on your top five werewolf list? Drop it in the comments. And as always, comment, like, subscribe to the Be Real with Be Real page so you can get new alerts when new stuff comes out. I will be coming back at you with another one of them other ones. And until I yam, yam y'all, be good and be good to each other. Happy Halloween. Be safe out there.